Hi, Gemini. All right. So last month's reading was insane. It was so cool. I'm happy about it. I really enjoyed it. It was a chance to just like see, oh, sorry, just to see another side of, not another side of Gemini, but just another side of how people react to Gemini, you know? Because we're kind of always like that, but it's like interesting to see when people are like offended by it or really like it or you know it's just interesting it's interesting to like watch people's reactions to us being really forthcoming and honest I can I think it like weirds people out a little bit because they're used to us kind of thinking of the best way to say things so people don't get hurt you know like Tauruses will just say things Libras and Sagittarians will just say things you know like Geminis try to take care like Oh, if I say that, it'll make her or him feel like this. I shouldn't, you know, maybe I should put it this way. Maybe I should do it that way. Now, there are a lot of people who say, no, you guys aren't like that at all. No, we are. We are. We're very careful with what we say when we care about you. If we're just mouthing off, it's because we don't care about you. Or we haven't been taught yet that, like, if you care about someone, don't do that. And, like, that's a very harsh lesson to learn. That may be a lesson that a lot of you have been learning, a lot of us have been learning with Saturn being in our house of relationships the past, you know, two and a half years. Now we're going to have so much focus this month. This is the card, I think it came up for Aries. Or was it Libra, you reap what you sow. So it is time to start collecting the Seven of Pentacles harvest. You know, two and a half years, regardless of if you feel like you did the work or not, um, you have been. Whether you feel like you've done the work or not, you have been doing the work. Because just Saturn doesn't make it easy, you know? Like, it doesn't care about your feelings about what's going on. It cares about you learning the thing and, and, and being better and following the rules. And I feel like Gemini having to deal with Saturn in any respect is just super frustrating because we don't like to follow rules so probably the first year or so is was just us trying to like finagle a way out of it and then once we realized we couldn't then there was like a period of like just sadness depression then it was like okay i'm just gonna accept that this is what it is <laughs> um two of pentacles and the moon so the moon came up at the Cancer reading last night. Two of Pentacles came up in the Scorpio reading. So why do I even mention that? Because there is a lot of activity in Scorpio this month, and it is going to affect us a lot. And there's a lot of activity in Sagittarius, which is going to affect us too, because all we want to do is like figure things out. We want to figure things out and we want to know the things. And guess what? This is the full moon today, tonight, uh, November 3rd, full moon in Taurus. So I was going to talk about that anyway, but since the card comes up, all right, let's talk about it. So full moon in Taurus, that's our house of the subconscious. It's the house right before us, right? So Gemini, first house. Okay, eight of wands. Gemini, first house. Taurus, 12th house. Okay, so full moon in Taurus, 12th house. You know that whatever is happening now is serious. And you want to be standing on very firm ground. That's why I said you may not feel like you were doing the work that Saturn needed you to do. You may not feel like you were. But you were, you have been, you have been the whole time. And now you're having done the work, you're like, okay, sorry, I'm super itchy. I apologize. Now having done the work, you're like, okay, well, I know all the warning signs. I know what to look for. You may not realize that you're now implementing the lessons of the past two and a half years, but you are. You're implementing them in 
in a way where there's so many things that you would have accepted before that you're not going to accept now. There's so many things that you would have perhaps let slide that you're like, oh no, there's no way. Like, no, you're not treating me that way. There are things that you have been known to do that over the past two and a half years, you've realized like, whoa, wh why am I acting like that? That's horrible. I should never do that. I shouldn't be that person anymore. You know what I mean? So, and I'm like itchy. Um, so the full moon in Taurus is shining now a light on all of the things that we know we've got to kind of clean house and take care of because Saturn is leaving. And it's like this final push, this final huge spotlight. Like, is there anything left in this basement? Is there anything left in this attic? Is there anything left in this room that needs to be cleaned out? You know what I mean? Like, let's do it. Let's get it all done. Let's take the flashlight and go through all the dark corners now. We know we've pretty much cleaned it out. We know we've got a pretty good handle on what we're reaping and what we're sowing. And we are in a playful, you know, we want to have fun. We want to be in a relationship now. We want to be together. We want to do things together. We are ready to progress, you know, the maturity that needed to kind of descend upon us has in terms of relationships, probably not much else right now. I mean, Saturn is about to go into Capricorn, so we've got to be really, really careful because we're going to go from being squeezed in terms of how we deal with the people we love to being squeezed in terms of how we deal with people that on a transactional basis, people we have to buy and sell with, give and take with. So we need to get this figured out because what's coming up is going to be difficult but only if you also still have relationship problems while the money stuff is coming up, then it's going to be doubly difficult. So it's really important to get this taken care of now so we can progress to the next challenge and be free and, you know, forthcoming with it and be like, yeah, okay, let me, let me have it. Like I can deal with it. You need Taurus full moon today to kind of shine this light really, really bright in all the corners that perhaps we haven't, completely cleaned out you know there's a little stuff there a little stuff there that we can kind of hide from ourselves and be in our Gemini denial and the eight of wands is like no actually you're going to have to do it and do it quickly because what's coming up is coming up so fast that this like this cycle ending transit ending clean out this you know transit ending full moon it's so necessary it's so necessary. Like, what's coming is coming in so fast. Love, relationships, you know, just uh, very possible to reconcile a relationship where you were in the wrong, right? And you're getting a second shot. Very possible to reconcile a relationship kind of just like, you know, neither one of you know why or how it happened, but now all of a sudden the energies are letting you be together and not, you know, it may have seemed for the past few years that like no matter what you did, you just couldn't, you couldn't get this person to see you. You couldn't get them to see how much you loved them. You couldn't get them to see that you were great. You know, this could also apply to just whatever your preference is, the entire gender. You know, you may have just had a, like a, more generalized sense of rejection and not just from like one specific person because what Saturn did when it came into our house of relationships is that it shook everything it shakes the building it shakes everything to see what is foundationally solid so we can rebuild you know and that process of breaking down and rebuilding nobody is a fan of that nobody wants to go through that but that's what makes Saturn and therefore Capricorn so necessary because, because nobody wants to do it. And because if we continue to build on a house that has a faulty foundation, at a certain age in your life, everything falls apart around you. So the way Saturn moves around a person's chart, when it falls in the house of relationships, it's because at that point in your life, you really need to come to terms with what it is about you that is holding you back from your relationships. You know, I had the most interesting reading in San Francisco I went um, to like this, like, like a corner, you know, like a, 
like a psychic, like a $5, like, you know, with the crystal ball psychic. Um, and I'm not, and I'm not a psychic. So like, you know, I'm not saying like anything bad about them. I'm just saying like, it was interesting to me. Like, let's go see. Right. So I went with like my human, you know, the person I'm into. Um, and what she told me was really interesting. She was like, well, he's got like a really pure heart. Like he's fine. Like he's into you, you know, like everything's fine on his end, but you've got something holding you back. And I was like, no, it's him. You know, he's the flighty air sign, earth sign who won't, you know. And she's like, no, he's like totally into it. Like, it's you. There's something within you that's holding you guys back from being together. And it really kind of, you know, when she first said it, I was like, okay, well, that's not where I thought this was going to go. You know, as many times I'm sure you watch these readings and you're like, okay, that's not where I thought that was going to go. So I was like, hmm, okay. So I took a few days to just mull over what she had said and really think about it, right? Like, what could it be within me that was causing such a level of uh, bitterness and anger that was keeping me from being with someone who obviously, you know, it was into me? And I kept kind of thinking about it and thinking about it. And what I realized is the past two years – so many disappointments, so many times where I thought things would relationally work out and they didn't. And it just like chipped away at my sense of self, chipped away at my sense of self-esteem. And then somewhere in that Saturn transit, things kind of turned on me. And I went from just feeling like I was taking L after L to being kind of bitter about it and being just angry about it and feeling like, well, perhaps, you know, this is just my fate. You know, after a couple of years, you start thinking like, well, maybe I'm just supposed to be alone. You know what I mean? Like, what's going on? Um, and for someone who'd never really been alone ever, like, I was like, what is this? You know, like, what happened to my mojo? Where to go? You know, can someone find it for me? Like, uh, one day I was fine. And like the day Saturn transited into our house of relationships is the day that like, you know, this guy left me and I was like whoa on the day bro like on the day you got to do that you know what I mean like no time wasted but all that is to say that when she said that to me I had to take a really good look at myself and admit to myself that I was you know I was upset I was bitter about it I was holding on to things and angry about them because this two and a half years to be quite frank I haven't gotten what I wanted at all in terms of love and relationships and all that and like Gemini's are not used to that. We're used to, to be perfectly frank. We're kind of spoiled. We're used to getting whatever we want. We're charming. We can communicate our feelings well. We can communicate our wants well. A lot of times the reason people don't get what they want is because they don't know how to say it. You know, we never have that problem. We're just like, oh, well, I would like this and this is why I would like it and give it to me. You know, the creaky gate always gets the oil. Like we're the creaky gate. We can be like, hey, me, hey, me, hey, me. So it is all that is to say that when you are so good at communicating, when you are so good at being the vocal creaky gate who gets the oil, right? It can be really hard then to go through a period of like creaking and you're like, hello, hello, hello. Help me, help me, help me. And there's like nothing happening. Now, all your life you're used to people coming over and being like, okay, all right, you need, do you need this? And I'm not saying people patronize us, but we do play into that a bit, right? We are like the mischievous children of the Zodiac. We do play into it. And Saturn comes in and is like, you know, these games you play, I don't like them. I don't like them and I don't like how these games get transferred over to the people that you love and have relationships with. So let's fix this. You know, and Gemini, we did our like, but um, let's negotiate. Hey, but Saturn, maybe we can. And Saturn's like, no, you're going to do the thing. And we're like, ah, but no, look how charming I am. Look how cute I am. Oh, I'm so smart. Look, uh, maybe I can distract you this way or this. And Saturn's like, no, no, you have to do the thing. Sorry. You know, so 
the bitterness that she was talking about was just two and a half years of me jumping around, you know, going, hey, well, can I distract you this way? Can I distract you this way? You know, and Saturn for two years has been like, no, none of that is going to work. But you could just, you know, learn <laughs> instead of doing all this and jumping around like that, you could just, you know, learn the lesson. And for me, specifically, the lesson was, and I suspect for most of us, the lesson was emotional self-reliance and emotional autonomy. The idea that you could be in a relationship with someone and not need to make them feel emotionally responsible for you, even though, of course, they're going to end up feeling that way. But I feel like Gemini have a tendency to really lean on their partners. We can be very needy. That way, like especially when our nervous energy gets too much for us, we start to kind of like spaz out and we need like that grounding influence. And I don't think we realize how much of a drain that is on anyone who wants to be around us or anyone who wants to like be with us, right? Because we need their grounding energy so bad, but so do they, right? So now we have been, you know, alchemically changed. Now we've gone through this transit that has been so hard on us and made us realize that there are things we can't take back. There are mistakes that can't be undone. There are words that we can not finesse our way out of once we've spoken them. You know what I mean? Our talent in communication and our talent in uh, expressing how we feel is not always the answer. The bitterness that can come from those realizations is what I'm talking about is what's so dangerous because it's so subtle you know before she said it I had no idea that I was feeling that way but as soon as she said it you know how sometimes I'll say things and you don't necessarily know that but as soon as I say it you're like whoa that's weird like that resonated crazy for me and the next the next you know of course of a few days you listen again or you think about it and you're like oh yeah, that's why that, you know, that's why that got to me or like was like a needle in my brain because there is some kernel of truth to it. So in the same way, when she said that to me, you know, I was kind of like, oh, but immediately I knew that, you know, she was right. And that instead of learning the lessons that Saturn was trying to teach me kind of like really quickly before it leaves because I had spent, you know, two years denying it and trying to charm my way out of it, the lessons are, you know, now just like quick, you know, and they're, and they're heavy. But on top of that, I had made my own situation worse by being bitter about it, by being angry about it. You know, I went from trying to charm my way out of it, that not working, straight to being mad. Didn't even take like that, you know, interim step of being like, well, maybe I should just learn the lesson. Maybe it would be a good idea to just, you know, do this thing that the entire universe seems to, seems to be wanting to push me towards. Maybe I should just listen. Didn't even occur to me. Didn't even occur to me. Went straight from not getting what I wanted, to being upset about not getting what I wanted, to being bitter about not getting what I wanted, and then still like kind of being like incredulous, like, why am I not getting what I want? How come? You know, and the psychic was like, because of you. And I was like, because of me? And she's like, yeah, because of you. And then I had to tell the Virgo it was because of me. And he's like, well, yeah. Annoying. Two of Cups. Knight of Swords. Let's look at it. Let's look. This is the kind of love you really really have been praying for wanting know you deserve you're going to be a little aggressive in trying to get it if you're dealing with an air sign or a cancer you will feel this aggressive kind of push towards you and you will feel the need to be aggressive as well there's a lot of speed here and a lot of depth of feeling a lot of twos. Gemini. We are like, we're on it. 
you know we're on it we're like we're in our zone you know we've been in our zone but now the love part of our chart catches up with the rest of our flow you know what i mean now we get to have this part of our lives in the zone as well now here's the really cool part about it this two of cups is a very stable kind of love when saturn leaves in december and even now we're starting to feel the effects of it you know letting off of us what comes in after that is solid it's real you know what i'm saying that card was the bottom of the deck then it comes up again ten of swords oh <laughs> so There is a large percentage of us right now who really need to move on. Seriously need to move on. Because there's so much good that's trying to come in. There's so much positive energy. There's so much relationship luck. There's so much abundance in terms of career. There's so much that's trying to come in. And yet we know that if a Gemini doesn't feel good, none of it matters it all kind of disintegrates in like ashes in our hands, right? Because we don't feel good. So what's making you not feel good? Because this card is very different from all the cards on the table, right? Everything is like light blue. This is like... I think the way I would interpret this... Right? <laughs> surprise, surprise. The way I would interpret this is you went through the tough, horrible thing. You did. You went through the horrible, tough thing. Especially, are you kidding me? Oh, this is beyond a joke. Um, sorry. Wow, that's like so offensive. It's crazy. Okay. Um, so you went through this thing with <laughs> a Virgo or someone who acts like a Virgo. Okay. And I'm not saying it wasn't like life altering, death feeling difficult. I'm not saying it wasn't. I mean, it's right there. It's obviously, it was obviously super horrible and painful. No denying it. But you know, the opportunity for it to be something incredible is now very real. Why? Because Saturn's leaving. This is what Saturn did to y'all, right? It was all these things. What did I say? It shakes the house to see if the foundation was solid. The foundation wasn't solid. Y'all fell out. You felt like you were dying. They always feel like they're dying. What's new? But then from the chaos and from the pain and from the loneliness and from the isolation and the anger and the lack of forgiveness from all of this emerges now an opportunity as if by magic to move forward into victory, into emotional victory. But it is important to understand and forgive this situation and leave it where it belongs in the dark murky past and move forward into the light and into your manifestation energy. And it completely makes sense to me, right? This was no doubt a terrible thing but I think whatever situation here that you're dealing with in terms of this earth sign, whether it's new or whether you're having to deal with it again because of what's going on with Saturn and how it's moving, regardless of what it is, this situation made you have to rethink, like I was saying about Saturn, how you are towards people and how they view you. Right. Often we have, like I've said before, we have that syndrome like Michael from the office, like the boss from the office where everyone can see how we're like, but we can't see how we're like. 
And I think what this situation did is it put in perspective for you with this keenly observant and intelligent person here, what you can be like, which is what Saturn was going to do anyway. That was Saturn's job anyway. So you have this kind of cohesion here where the messages you've been getting for the past couple of years have not been positive necessarily. You definitely need a thick skin to go through a Saturn transit of any kind, but especially when it comes to how we love. Because I think before the transit, most of us were feeling like we were really good at loving. We had really good mojo. We had good luck. Like it was all good. But now we can see how this situation, although it was super painful or is super painful, is teaching you something really valuable about yourself. Because anyone who's taking you to this point is showing you a side of yourself that you don't often see. Right? So regardless of if it's super abusive and destructive or you're completely in love, it doesn't really matter. What matters is the lesson and the opportunity that comes from it. Now, is that opportunity with this person? It can be. But again, the point here of establishing this kind of autonomy outside of this emotional you know, rat race here, the reason that Saturn comes in and shakes everything is because Saturn doesn't want you to be dependent on this site. Sorry, camera froze. It wants you to be there and it wants you to be building something real, right? It wants you to be building something real. It wants you, if this is the person you want, it wants you to break out of this cycle and look at what you have been planting and what you stand to reap now and have fun with it, but be careful. The moon is also changeability. With everything that's going on with Scorpio and Jupiter and all the energy and obviously love coming in for you and you have to be really careful that this isn't a manipulative love that's coming in. With all that going on, the moon here also represents that Cancerian energy of fluctuation. Cancerians, their weight fluctuates, their skin health fluctuates, their mood fluctuates, everything. So you have that capacity this month to really go up and down, up and down with them. Now, if you find yourself in a situation with a cancer where they're trying to figure out whether they want to be with you or not and you're kind of like letting them take that time and kind of trying to see not kind of but trying to see what your own the fruits of your own labor are and letting that person be alone and see what they need to do and what they need to figure out that person that person is coming up as the moon as someone who is by nature you know, changeable, changes all the time, has the ability to be super loving and, and, and cruel at the same time. This is Yeah, it's, say, it's strange to say it this way, but if this is a Cancerian relationship, Gemini, that you're in, this is pretty hurtful to you. It's pretty painful to you. I mean, I know this is painful, but this this is more painful in some like deeper way. Like, I'm wondering if you wonder if this person really cares about you because they change so often. Right? And then the obvious solution being that towards the end of the month, you will find a way to resolve these things and move forward positively. Either you're going to bump into someone new or you're going to bump into someone old that you really wanted to have something with. Either way, you're going to get an opportunity to do something if you want to. You'll get the opportunity to be with someone if you want to. The only thing you shouldn't do is the thing I said at the beginning of the video, which is don't get stuck. Right? Everything else is fine. Just don't get stuck. Because when you get stuck here and you can't use that Gemini energy to communicate and move and, and, and you know, emotionally move when you need to and emotionally carry on. When you get stuck, you can't do any of that. And when you get stuck, when you get obsessive, when you get 
you know, into this I can't live without this person kind of energy, then it always turns into this tower situation. Because the reason this card, you know, this person comes up as the Virgo is because Virgos are really independent. These are not cards of independence. This is someone who's kind of freaking out at the independence of someone else. Right? So, not getting stuck means taking the bitterness away, not having that hate in your heart, getting up every morning and not letting the consecutive L's and all the terrible feelings get to you, not to let it make you bitter because then you will be able to, then you'll be blocking your own blessings. That's basically what she was saying, right? And when you don't block your blessings, look what you're going to get. So fantastic. All right. Let's bring it in the, in the extended. We'll do, we'll do bottom of the deck and then we'll talk a little bit more about Jupiter in Scorpio and also about, um, what's it called? Mercury is going to be in Sagittarius for a while. And that's also our relationship house and Saturn's leaving there. And Scorpio will have the sun, but Scorpio will also have the new moon. Scorpio will also have Venus. Like it's, it's a lot. So we'll talk about all of that in the extended and um let's see i think there's a couple of tickets left for two dates in new york november 9th and november 10th there's a satsang which is a gathering where you can like ask me questions and we'll do a group healing and stuff at queen of swords in bushwick the tickets are available through eventbrite i will post the link below i'll also post the link for Elma Salon. Elma recently cut, I think last week cut my hair, so this is our fall look. I'm also wearing Pat McGrath's new Mothership palette on the eyes. All the looks this month are from the Mothership palette just because we're not like affiliated with her or anything. We're just big fans and the products are dope. So that's a fun thing that we're doing. Um, I will be doing personal readings, but only emergency readings and you can book them over email. So there is that. As far as the extended for Gemini, it'll be out next week. And if you cannot access it on YouTube, please then go to my website. I'll link it below and I'll be able to help you. All right. I love you guys. I loved last month's video. I'm so glad you guys liked it. I'm so glad you found it to be as profound actually as I found it to be. And... You know, I'm not mad at this reading. I love you. I'll see you in December.